bankruptcies, lawsuits, and enforcement actions. We have seen this going on for over six months, six to nine months. There's a lawsuit, the SEC versus Ripple Labs, which says that the XRP token was sold as a security, is also in the mix. That's been going on for two years. We need to understand what exactly is happening with these bankruptcies, what exactly is happening with any of these any lawsuits and any enforcement actions. And or and and by understanding that, we can better understand the path to crypto adoption. Without understanding and being aware of things such as class action lawsuits, enforcement actions by regulators, bankruptcies by big industry players, if we refuse to pay attention to that, then we really are not paying attention to what's going on in crypto. Welcome back to How About That Crypto, your home for crypto news, Web3 news, and updates. I am your host, Bitcoin Stylist, and today we're going to give you a little update on Voyager, bankruptcy, something's happening with Alameda, and we had a new an enforcement action by the SEC against Library. There was a verdict on that, and there is some really one really interesting piece of information that I think it's important to know. And we also have <clears throat> we also have some other actions happening with uh, with a lawsuit between Grayscale and the SEC, and that's all tied into the bankruptcy of Digital Currency Group and, and Genesis Capital. So if you haven't been paying attention uh, to the space or if you haven't been watching the show, then uh, it's important for you to understand that uh, we've had a massive crash over the summer due to uh, a bunch of shenanigans going on in the market people lending money out irresponsibly, your and my money irresponsibly, and uh, people playing funny games with their money and our money and uh, basically just like stealing from us or taking really, really big risky bets uh, without properly informing us of that risk. Now, that what that has caused is a lot of people have left the market. There has been a... Um, a drop in confidence uh, by potential new on oncomers. But as you probably also know, there is the crypto folk like myself. Um, and they have been buying into Bitcoin and crypto. We've seen a nice little rally recently, and there's a big discussion about whether or not this is a bear market rally or if we're in a bull market. Uh, as you would know, if you're listening to this channel, I believe that this is not the beginning of a bull market. I mean, I kind of hope it is, but I am a little skeptical. And I'm going to tell you why I'm skeptical, because there is a lot of uncertainty around some of the things I'm going to tell you. However, I'm going to start with some good news. And so why don't we just dive right in? All right, let me just share my screen and you can listen up. And follow along if you're listening on podcast by using the links in the description below do not forget this is not financial advice this is for you to listen to my opinions and enjoy the entertainment and if you'd like to do more research you can use the links below to figure make your own decisions on any sort of investments tax or legal stuff remember this is not not con to be considered advice. Uh, just listen up. I want you to check this out. I think it's really good. So this is um, John Deaton. John Deaton is the founder and host of Crypto Law, and he's getting a report on what happened in New Hampshire federal court at a crucial hearing and uh, with library. This was a a hearing that took place after a decision where they're trying to get some clarity on the intricacies of this decision. So like, just like with the Ripple Labs versus uh, SEC, the SEC was trying to say that library sold their coins and it was considered a sale of securities. So it's kind of like if you have a business and you want to start up a business and you need money to start it up and you still sell sell shares in your company, 
That's considered a sale of a security. So what the SEC is arguing here and also with X, uh, Ripple Labs is that when the tokens were initially sold, they were sold in a way that is what they call initial coin offering, which is very similar to an uh, initial public offering, which is heavily regulated by the SEC. Now, check this out and then we'll talk about it. There is not going to be an injunction that can be applied to users like, like uh, Naomi or anyone else. But then I said to him, Judge, great, you're not going to give an injunction, but you still please have to address this secondary market issue. And I pointed out to him that there was so much confusion about it. And then he did something great. He basically looks over at the SEC and says, you agree, right, with him that, you know, imagine that. I want everybody to imagine that a judge looking over at the SEC attorney saying, you agree with Deaton, right? They weren't that happy about it, but they then said, well, you know, what if it is a particular agent of the person? And then it could be. And the judge said, you got to make a commitment. And the judge did something great. He said, let's use an example. And he said, library sold to an investment club who took the LBC and put it in cold storage, a direct sell. The judge said, I found that to be an unregistered securities offering. And you agree with me, right, SEC? And they go, yes. Then the judge said, but if Flipside sells it to someone else in the secondary market, independent of library, you got to agree that that's not, my order doesn't apply to that scenario. And that's the victory that we got. The SEC had to concede that on the record in real time. So call that what you want, but that was great. Um, Okay, so what is he saying? He is saying that the judge in this library case, remember, like judicial precedent, like if a ruling comes in and there's another case in court or another case gets brought to court, they can say, well, look, this judge found this out and to, found this to be true. And typically, from what I understand, and again, I'm not a lawyer, but from what I understand, uh, judicial precedent is heavily weighed in an opinion. And if, if one judge somewhere has already made a decision, especially in a federal case, then uh, most likely the next judge will look at a previous judge's decision. And uh, so that's a victory, was what he's saying. He's saying that, yes, the initial coin offering, the initial sale of the library token was a sale of security. They did not do what they were supposed to. They should have registered that with the SEC. However, once the initial sale was uh, took place by library, when the second when the people who purchased it sold it into a secondary market, meaning they went on Uniswap or Coinbase or whatever, and they sold their tokens to somebody else, that that sale was not the sale of a security. Therefore, in theory, and based on what he's saying, how I understand it is that Coinbase can list this library token because it is not participating in the initial sale which could be could be kind of uh extrapolated from you can extrapolate from that that we're saying that the judge is basically supporting the argument that xrp is not as a security sale which if they decide that then that means that coinbase's and all these other platforms would not be selling securities most of these coins, I mean, assuming that they're properly decentralized or whatever, whatever the parameters are, then then the all the coins will be safe. You know, the big worry is that the SEC wins one of these cases and then the and then they just get like a blanket ruling saying no, those are securities. What the argument here is the secure the tokens themselves are not securities, but the sale, the initial sale. Is a is a is a security is a is like a contract between the company and the person who bought it. But the person who bought it, they turn around and sell it to me. There's no security. There's no there's no agreement. There's no expectation of profit by me by that person. So that, I think that that's that's awesome, incredible. Because once you own the token, you're not entitled to anything um, on the secondary market. And so 
it, by 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 discerning the difference between those two, then that should be bode well for the XRP case, and which should bode well for uh, taking some of the steam out of the heavy hand by the SEC uh, in enforcement action. It would kind of be like a victory. It'd be like a semi victory, but more of a victory than the SEC would admit to. So anyway, so I think that's really interesting. Let me know if you got something different or if you have anything to add to that. Um, that's a really, that's really good news. And so we're just waiting to see what happens with XRP and uh, ripple labs and the sec. So we'll see soon. So I'm going to move on and I'm going to come over here to this article on Bitcoinist. It is, I think it's recent. So let's see. Uh, it doesn't have any, oh yes, no, it's not that recent. I wanted to bring this up, uh, because, I think that the, there are a number of things that got missed over the past few weeks between the bull run and uh, FTX and all that stuff. And all that stuff's important. But to me, like we can't lose sight of what's happening outside of all the hype in the mainstream media. This article is titled Crucial Day for Bitcoin Court Sets Date for Grayscale versus SEC. So Grayscale owns the Grayscale Bit, uh, Bitcoin Trust, which owns 630,000 Bitcoin. Uh, as we have been talking about extensively, Digital Currency Group owns Grayscale. They also own Genesis. They also own Coindesk and a bunch of others. I did a whole deep dive. The link is in the description below if you want to learn more. Digital Currency Group is by far the biggest company an organization in crypto with their with with investments in over 200 companies and multiple wholly owned subsidiaries and one of the subsidiaries holds 630,000 Bitcoin, a bunch of Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Solana. They own a bunch of trusts. So if they have to sell those trusts, then the market will crash. Like I don't care. Like, anybody want to like please debate me on that. Like imagine if 630,000 Bitcoin had to be sold. Now what's the likelihood of that happening? I don't think it's very high. But the big question is, now that Genesis Capital is filed, has filed for bankruptcy, their parent company, DCG, is on the hook for $1 billion worth of worth of, uh, and of, of a promissory note. And I just read today that they're going to turn that promissory note into equity, and that's the offer that's being made. So that means Genesis Capital now owns $1 billion worth of equity in digital currency group. And now that is going to get divvied out amongst the creditors, which include Gemini among others who have, who, who has funneled money from Gemini into Genesis to the tune of $900 million. And so they're trying to get as much of that money or all of it, or as much as they can back for their customers who uh, are the ones that, have lost their money to Genesis. So there's a lot, it's like a big shoe that drop up. Like we really don't know. So like, I don't see how anyone could be bullish until we figure out how this is going to play out. I think that it's more speculation than anything. I don't think there's anything fundamental about this bull market. Um, that's why I don't think it's a bull market. I think it's a bear market rally. I think it's going to come back down. Um, best case scenario, it does. It goes sideways for a while. It doesn't go back down, but you don't see any real upside unless any upside from here, I would definitely be skeptical of. Um, now, anyway, we can talk about more of that later. So this is an article and that, that's talking about this lawsuit and Grayscale fought a lawsuit against the SEC because they want to turn the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust into an ETF. And it says here that um, another huge headache for DCG and Grayscale in particular is the loss of confidence in GBTC, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. The discount to net asset value is currently around 41%. It's a little, that was two weeks ago. It's more like 30% now. So if you buy Grayscale Bitcoin Trust stock, uh, then you will be buying Bitcoin at a 30% discount. Now, that doesn't mean that that discount can't get wired and you can lose money on your stocks because if there's another big loss of confidence and everyone starts selling their Grayscale Bitcoin trust stock, then uh, you're going to lose money because it doesn't move up and down with the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin could be staying the same, but the market could get super scared for some news and sell their Grayscale Bitcoin trust and that'll cause the value of the stock to go down, but they still own the same amount of Bitcoin. So the idea here is you switch over to an ETF, a spot ETF, and then that spot ETF, then uh, Genesis and DCG can sell their 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 um their holdings in grayscale without natively impacting the price because a spot ETF means that the price will move up and down and closely track the price of Bitcoin, which means that if you buy great in theory, if I now, 
all the grayscale I, b- I bought at 30% discount will eventually rise to par value of the Bitcoin. So I'm going to gain an extra 30% right there. And then, um, and then if DCG or grace or sorry, Genesis have to sell their grayscale, then that shouldn't impact it because now it's a spot ETF. So like, that's really kind of what this article is saying. It's like, it's a saving grace to the industry. However, we don't get that. Then DCG is going to have to figure out a way to come up with that money. And if they start selling, then that's going to be a problem. However, in this article, it says, um, all of this suggests that DCG is on shaking ground. While selling its own GBTC and ETH holdings is not really an option. According to Bloomberg data, DCG owns nearly one-tenth of all Grayscale shares, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust shares. But because of securities regulation, DCG is not allowed to sell more than 1% of outstanding GBTC shares per quarter. Moreover, DCG would further harm the trust. Okay, so basically, they can't even sell all their stuff. And it says the lawsuit against the SEC seems like a glimmer of hope. Like I was saying, like if if it could be an ETF, then they could sell their sell their grayscale. You know, if it's six hundred thousand Bitcoin and Bitcoin's trading at say twenty thousand dollars, then what is that? Six hundred thousand times uh, twenty thousand. Let's just do that real quick. So I'm gonna do six hundred thousand. Times twenty thousand. That's twelve billion dollars. Uh, so they would get ten percent of that, one point two billion dollars. And guess what? That's the size of that promissory note. So I think that they want this to happen. Now, what happens if they don't? It says in worst case scenario, rejection of the grayscale lawsuit could have a severe impact on DCG's next step. So like I said, if you're super excited about crypto right now, I don't think that that is a healthy place to be. I think that it's better to be optimistically or what is it? Cautiously optimistic because this is basically saying that scary times could still unfold. Now, I'm just going to kind of super wrap this up. Voyager customers, which I am a Voyager customer. This says for me, uh, I got this email today. You probably got it as well. And it says, um, hey, transfer your data over to Binance. And as soon as this thing closes, you're going to get your money. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I already have a Binance account. I don't use it. uh, But I'm going to transfer my data over to Binance and Binance will, uh, as soon as the money is available, I can just pull my money off of Binance real quick. And it says that this asset purchase agreement um, is supposed to close by April 18th. So it's still got a little ways to go. So they're saying like, if you, if you, you know, you got to get a process to set up an account with Binance, but I also read here that it, you don't have to open up an account with Binance. Uh, it just says that it looks like you'll just get your money, get a, get a check in cash, but I want my crypto. Hmm. So anyway, um, that's what I did. I, I will be like to show some caught everyone to see some like be caution, cautious because FTX is suing Voyager digital claw back $446 million in low payments made in 2022. So if you dig into this story, it turns out that FTX and Voyager both filed for bankruptcy and amid a 2022 collapse in cryptocurrency, but Voyager's bankruptcy preceded FTX's filing. And it says, uh, after Voyager filed in July, it demanded repayment of all outstanding loans to FTX and its affiliate hedge fund. So basically, Voyager filed for bankruptcy and was like, hey, FTX, Alameda, you got to give me my money. And so they got money. It says here, it says uh, it paid Voyager $248 million in September and $139 million in October. And then it made a $30.2 million interest payment in August. So FTX was paying their bills. and uh, But the FTX was also going to buy Voyager. So I'm sure they were just like trying to be in good standing so they could buy it and then pull another shenanigan on us like they have throughout this whole thing. However, this is saying like this is going to could potentially affect uh, how much money we get from Voyager through the Binance deal. But I'm sure Binance, you know, it's not going to, all it's going to do is change the amount. Right now, it was about 40% we're supposed to get back. Uh, so, I mean, I'll take 40%. It's better than zero. It's better than 25. And it's not as good as the 70% we're supposed to get back under FTX. But I think that was all just like, that was all just, just 
just a con anyway. Anyway, what do you think about all this news? Uh, let me know. Uh, leave a comment below. I know that it's not particularly positive news. There's a little bit of good news in there that we have like we're setting ourselves up. But I think what what I take from all this is uh, crypto is not going anywhere and uh, it's going to be around. And I do believe that prices will rebound and I do believe this technology will be adopted. I just think that it's not happening right now. Hope I'm wrong. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below and hodl on.